and then I'm sending them the book. So they're receiving almost like a, uh, an investor starter kit. So yeah, so again, just kind of starting out with the interview a little bit, if you could tell me a bit about yourself, how long you've been in real estate? I've actually been in real estate for uh, over 20 years. Um, I've worked in the in a multitude of different facets of real estate, um, from property management. Um, and there was a point in time where I had my own brokerage, um, a lot of the service areas, uh, corporate leasing, um, <laughs> all the way to landscaping, plumbing, building and engineering services, maintenance. Um, obviously, I'm a licensed real estate agent um, as well. So uh, there's really not too much in terms of this industry that I have not done. Um, there just may be some things that I've done a little bit more of. Right. And when you uh, responded to the email, you were talking about experience with investors. Correct. correct? Correct. Tell me, um, just, I think one of the biggest questions that people have that we get is how do you even kind of start building those relationships? How do you reach out to investors or how do they, you get them to reach out to you? Well, I think it has to do, um, your inventory is going to attract a certain type of clientele, Mm. you know, uh, at the end of the day, um, I tell, all of the investors that it doesn't matter where the property is, what the property is, um, because it should be to the extent possible an emotionless, uh, uh, determination, meaning that the numbers should dictate the deal, whether it's a good deal, whether it's a bad deal, it should all be determined on, on, on the bottom line. And, uh, if you let the numbers dictate the deal, and uh, don't let the other caveats kind of come into it. You can usually end up on the right side of things, irrespective of where it is that you're looking to invest. Diversification um, is very important in investing, any type of investing, frankly, but diversification is, is also important. So when you ask the question, where do you find your investors? Your investors can be as diverse as the diversification of the portfolio itself. Um, So just some specific kind of places, individuals who are high money earners typically need places to put their money. And because they're high money earners, they're looking for places to put their money that's going to work for them. Um, Secondarily, you have homeowners on on the opposite end of the spectrum, not necessarily, but on the opposite end of the spectrum, you have a homeowner who's maybe looking to offset the cost of their own personal home. So something uh, as simple as a duplex or multi-unit where they can live and rent where they live to offset their cost can also be considered an investment. So it's a wide ranging question, um, but once you kind of find your own kind of personal niche and level of comfort, you can better answer that yourself. Um, But People are all over the place, from actual owners to high money earners looking places to put their money to the individuals just starting out looking to get away from uh, their job Mm -hmm. uh, nine to five, you know, and uh, I I tell the investors very often, rather get paid once for putting in the door, get paid each time the door opens and closes. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty simple theory. If you can go out there and uh, develop a portfolio of properties, uh, this is something that can allow you uh, the type where you can wake up when you're done sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> what, uh, so it, it, finding those investors like those, you know, the single homeowner type investor, is that something that you're always, you know, always kind of got in the back of your mind when you're uh, doing a deal for anybody, you know? Yeah, well, yeah, depending on what it is that you're looking for, familiarity with your market um, is, is also important. Because when you have a homeowner, a homeowner wants to live in a nice place because it's their home. Um, but a, another kind of rule of thumb that I tell people is don't over rehab. 
So if you want to make your house nice and, and make the other one a little bit, you know, different, so to speak, and <laughs> maybe not as nice, mm-hmm. you know, you can approach it that way too. So mm-hmm. it, again, it's a, it's, a, it's a situation where finding the, the matching the investment style to the person mm-hmm. um, is always a good, good way to go. Right. Um, I guess, you know, obviously, you know, if you spend any time in the industry, you're going to have those stories where it just didn't work out. Is there a certain type of, are there kind of red flags with people that kind of go up that you back off from? Like, what are those red flags that you say, you know what, I'm not even going to get into this with them? Well, we, um, uh, the team that I work with, uh, have an internal rating system. And the kind of way that we, we look at that is we have the freshman, the JV, the varsity, and, and the pro. So depending on which individual that we're working with and their familiarity with the industry, it, it all it depends on how involved we are. Some people come in, know exactly what they want. They've done this, you know, a million times. The, the first time person that you're coming in, we're trying to warn them of certain things. Like, you know, don't over leverage yourself. As I said, don't over rehab. You know, we try to give them the do's and don'ts. So I wouldn't say there wouldn't be anybody we wouldn't work with, but we would try to offer um, a level of advice consummate with their experience. Is it something that you've marketed to specifically in the past? Like, have you kind of set up like a, a marketing pipeline for that? Um, well, the, the, the funny thing is investors know other investors. Mm-hmm. Um, so investment groups, networking, networking groups, um, frankly, the use of the authorified books um, mm-hmm. as a business card to individuals in those environments. Um, I've had some people read the three or five books who weren't necessarily interested in investing, but after reading the book, felt felt comfortable in doing so. So, uh, you know, you never know who that person is going to be. It, it could be the single mom, it's, it just as easily it could be the, the corporate person. And with the advent and accessibility of the different type of financial vehicles, um, hard money loans, acquisitions loans, um, you know, home equity lines of credit, cash purchases, auctions. Uh, there's a price point as well for everyone. There's a large contingent of investors, especially in some of the uh, urban cities that are experiencing uh, some, some renaissance right now. Uh, Detroit, Baltimore, St. Louis. There's a, there's a large contingent of people who are simply buying with the intent not to do anything but hold the asset mm-hmm. till the asset becomes more. So even within that, you have people who, who are investing not to do anything, but right. just to hold. So uh, that comes into play also. I like what you, you talking about using your authorify books and how that's, you've had people that read it and decided to get into it. What did they, I mean, how did that, how do you think that that kind of helped spur that idea of being able to invest in additional properties? Well, the funny thing is, uh, just in life, probably I would say, you know, 80% of the thing that holds people back is simply a a fear and and lack of knowledge. So by being able to provide investors with a step-by-step blueprint of of what to look for and and how to go about things, it it removes that, that, uh, that facade that, oh, this is something that I can't do. This is something that's, you know, truly complicated. By being able to pass that along with someone in a non-pressure situation where they can kind of go back and look at it at their leisure, I certainly, um, since using the, using, using the books, been able to call a following of investors that, quite frankly, I don't think I otherwise would have gotten um, because simply because they, they read the book and at the end of reading, they said, Hey, I can do that. Yeah. And, they're, and, and they're absolutely right. So what, uh, what books do you particularly do you have? Um, well, I, I have the, uh, getting the most out of your investment book for Thor, mm-hmm. and I also use the, um, uh, the, uh, the, what I have here, uh, 
by purchasing your uh, home right book as well so I, I focus. I'm focused on buyers, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm probably going to diversify my authority relationship as well. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm focused on buyers because I would say 70, 70 75 percent of my buyers are investors. And mm -hmm. uh, to be to be candid, out of those, out of that, probably fifty percent of those are out of state. Mm -hmm. um, you know, California, New York, uh, Georgia. North right. Carolina, and as I said, I'm in the D.C. metropolitan area, so I mean the value in a place that's, as I said, undergoing a renaissance and, uh, and where there's a lot of money to be made. Right. I, as I said, I'm, I'm from, I've been doing this for 20 years, from the D.C. metropolitan area. 20 years ago, Southeast D.C. on the news and in person was probably one of the roughest, toughest cities to live in. Right. Now you can't find any inventory, period. And if you find something, you, you're not, if you can find it for five hundred to 600000 it's a good day. Yeah. That's, I think, the direction where some of these other cities are headed. And I think mm -hmm. why so many people are anxious to learn and ultimately to get involved. Right. So how do you, what's your process for getting your investor book into people's hands? Is that something you send them, you know, right out of the gate? Or is that something that kind of goes to them throughout your process of helping them find their first place? Well, it, it, as, I, as I said a moment ago, we have the freshman JV varsity mm -hmm. and, and pros. So I, I don't, I don't too much shoot the, shoot, shoot the book to the pros. <laughs> um, but as opposed to uh, being condescending or, or being negative with some of the, maybe the lesser experienced investors, subject matter um, that they bring up that I may say, ah, that's a, that's a red flag or a speed bump. Um, you know, I'll say, hey, this particular subject is covered um, in this book. Um, if you'd like to know a little bit more about it, maybe you don't have to read the whole book. Why don't you read the chapter on staging and the important? Why don't you read the chapter on financing and, and, and what to look for there? And by introducing in small doses to those who are already involved, as I said, giving it to somebody who who, who is fearful and hasn't gotten involved yet, that's a, that's a clear. Please, please take one of these. For someone who's maybe struggling in some areas or isn't as confident in some areas or maybe – taking a wrong path in some areas. So, so it doesn't seem like I'm, you know, speaking down. I'll say, hey, check it out in the book. And then, then it becomes something that they've, in a sense, discovered and corrected organically mm -hmm. as opposed to having someone, you know, say, don't do this, don't do that, go do this, go do that. Um, they, they're able to kind of read and react in their, in their own time frame. Right. Right. And I think that's really a, a powerful way to do it because that whole time you're building that, you know, every single time you're showing your expertise and it's that, Hey, you're coaching them through the whole process. So they're going to keep coming back to you. Right. And, and the book, the electronic book, um, I'm able to send right out. <laughs> so the process for me is, uh, I, I speak to an investor. I find, you know, what their what their niche is, what their price range is, and I'm setting them up on an auto search. Once I set them on an auto search, I'm sending them instructions on how to use the auto search. Um, I'm sending them uh, a member of our five that's hard money or or traditional uh, lending, and then I'm sending them the book. So they're receiving almost like a uh, an investor starter kit where now they have the book, which, which will walk them through the process. They have the lending mechanism that works for them, and they have a list coming to them each and every day uh, through their auto search of what it is that's within their budget that they're looking for. I found that combination very effective to, uh, and, and, uh, and not, not only effective, but effective very quickly. Meaning I'll have somebody read that book in three or four days and, and we know that they're not, but they, they feel a level of confidence that maybe an expert might have and they're, and they're ready to move. They're ready to put their offer in 
you know, give it to them on a, on a, on a, on a Monday. They're, they're, we're out looking on Saturday, putting an offer in by Sunday night. And a lot of times getting a ratified contract by that money. So in a week's time, um, people were turning into, I wouldn't say seasoned investors, but investors who are comfortable and confident in their um, asset. Right. So you were, I mean, you're obviously doing this before you joined in Authorify and before getting the books. How has it helped that process? It, time. <laughs> um, at the end of the uh, day, time is money. And, mm-hmm. you know, when you're, when you're full-time in the real estate business, doing all the different facets that I told you that, um, I do um, and have done, time is of the essence. So if I'm able to leverage myself by being able to disseminate information that I otherwise would have to uh, verbalize or get on a, uh, a Zoom meeting and go over, or, or even, even worse, if someone makes a mistake of some sort, correcting that mistake is, uh, takes a lot of time sometimes. So by being able to pass out um, the literature, uh, I'm able to give information in a uh, non-intrusive manner where they can digest it at their leisure, but I'm still giving it to them. Um, and I'm able to spend that time maybe supporting them or somebody else in another way. So for me, it's, it's, it's the time and the area of focus. Because uh, maybe there may be a situation where we think everything is fine in a transaction mm-hmm. um, because people present different ways. Um, and sometimes there's apprehension on other people's parts to say they don't know anything. It's just human nature. Mm-hmm. So by them not feeling comfortable necessarily asking me a direct question, by them having the book, they can kind of go and uh, investigate and do their own due diligence in certain areas. So it's, it's saving my investors time, allowing them to move. And it saves me a lot of time for having to explain a lot of things. I, I found myself, I found myself, uh, you know, tongue in cheek, messing with some of the clients that I've given the book to and say, ah, you didn't read the book, did you? That's in chapter such and such, or that's in chapter such and such, you know? And um, I'm able to point them back in a friendly, you know, non, you know, confrontational way to say, go read the book. It's in there. Yeah. Right. Well, Oh, awesome. Well, I really appreciate you jumping on this call with me. I think it's, you know, that whole campaign that you have set up, I think is, is super insightful. And it's, it's really something any of our members can do. Oh, I mean, that's, that's kind of the, uh, the, the, the trick to all of this. It's a, it's a, it's an easily duplicatable process for someone who speaks well, for someone who's shy and prefers not to speak, someone who's analytical, someone who's boisterous. Um, if, if, if you can pass out a business card or you can shake someone's hand, um, you can build a client base through the use of the tools and mechanisms available through your, through your company. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I really do appreciate you spending the time with me. It's been my pleasure.